trucks that promised muscle but couldn't haul their own weight, to luxury experiments that missed the mark entirely. Here are some of the most unexpected disappointments in the realm of pickups. Take, for instance, the 1972 Ford Courier, a truck that failed to secure a spot in the Hall of Fame for pickups. Imagine this. Ford, observing the hype around compact Toyota and Nissan trucks, decides they want a piece of the action. They join forces with Mazda to berth the Ford Courier. It sounds like a solid plan, doesn't it? Well, not quite. Let's dissect why this truck is often remembered for all the wrong reasons. To start, let's address its aesthetics and what lies beneath the hood, or rather, what's falling apart under there. Right from the outset, the Courier resembled that ambitious project you begin with boundless enthusiasm only to find it floundering along the way. Observers couldn't help but notice its slightly askew appearance, coupled with a notable lack of durability both inside and out. We're talking about a genuine absence of that rugged reliability one expects from a truck. Now about the power, or the lack thereof. This truck came with a 1.8-liter engine pushing out a whopping 74 horsepower. Yeah, you heard that right. While it might have been okay back in the day, it just couldn't hang with the other trucks on the block. It was like showing up to a marathon with one shoe. You're not going to get very far. And then there's the practicality issue. For a pickup, you'd expect it to carry. Well, your pickups, right? But with a payload capacity of just 1,400 pounds. Payload, it wasn't going to be hauling much. This was a big miss for anyone looking for a truck to do truck things. Talking about bang for your buck, the courier rolled onto the scene with a price tag of just over $3,000. Now, while that might not sound too bad, when you stack up all its issues, poor design, lack of power, falling apart at the seams, it just didn't add up to a good deal especially when there were better options out there for the same dough. So, wrapping this up, the 1972 Ford Courier was kind of a misfire on Ford's part. It was their answer to the small pickup craze, but it just didn't deliver. In 2002, Lincoln took a bold leap into the luxury pickup truck market with the Lincoln Blackwood. However, their ambitions didn't quite align with the outcome they hoped for. Picture this. The luxurious feel of a Lincoln Navigator melded with the body of a Ford F-150, adorned with sleek Navigator taillights. It sounded like a winning combination, and Lincoln marketed it as the pinnacle of luxury trucks. Yet, things began to unravel. Firstly, there was a notable identity crisis. Imagine a truck that exuded elegance, but failed to deliver on the practical needs of truck users. It's akin to showing up at a campsite with a stunning tent that leaks at the first sign of rain. Then came the issue of versatility. The Blackwood eschewed four-wheel drive, opting solely for rear-wheel drive, a choice that didn't bode well for off-roading or towing endeavors. Additionally, its cargo space was severely lacking, with a cramped 27 cubic feet trunk. Yes, they referred to it as a trunk, making it a hard sell for anyone needing to haul substantial cargo. Now let's discuss the cargo bed. It was carpeted, boasted a fancy powered tonneau cover, and featured LED lighting, resembling more of a fashion show runway than a practical hauling space. It seemed style-trumped substance. And the price tag? A staggering $52,500. That's quite a sum, especially for a truck that lagged behind its more affordable counterparts in terms of utility. This hefty price, coupled with the Blackwood's limitations, resulted in a short-lived production run of just a single year, indicating that Lincoln's experiment didn't quite pan out as anticipated. While its rarity may render it a collector's item, it also means it's less recognized and less admired compared to other trucks on the market. The Blackwood's reception was mixed, to say the least. While some appreciated its unique style and luxurious touches, many couldn't overlook its exorbitant price and limited practicality. It even earned a spot on Autoblog's list of the dumbest cars of all time, which certainly isn't a badge of honor. The 2010 Dodge Dakota, a truck that, well, didn't quite make it to the top tier of pickups. Imagine this. Dodge, observing the fervor surrounding mid-sized trucks, decides they want a piece of the action. So, they introduce the Dodge Dakota, aiming to bridge the gap between full-size and compact pickups. Sounds like a solid plan, right? Well, not exactly. Let's delve into why this truck fell short of expectations. Firstly, there was an identity crisis. Picture a truck that's caught between two worlds offering neither the spaciousness of a full-size nor the maneuverability of a compact. 
It's like bringing a jack of all trades to a specialist's party, doesn't quite fit in. And then there's the issue of power, or the lack thereof. The Dakota came equipped with a range of engines, but none really packed a punch. With options ranging from a timid 3.7-liter V6 to a somewhat beefier 4.7-liter V8, it felt like showing up to a race with a bicycle and a scooter. Next up, let's talk about versatility. The Dakota offered various cab and bed configurations, but none seemed to hit the sweet spot. Whether you opted for the extended cab or the crew cab, the interior always felt a bit cramped. And don't get me started on the cargo bed. It was like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. Now, when it comes to bang for your buck, the Dakota rolled onto the scene with a competitive price tag. But when you factor in its shortcomings, lackluster power, cramped interior, and subpar cargo space, it just didn't add up to a compelling offer. Especially when there were better options available for a similar price. To sum it up, the 2010 Dodge Dakota was a bit of a misfire on Dodge's part. It aimed to capture the mid-sized truck market, but fell short in delivering the goods. Its reception was lukewarm at best, with some appreciating its versatility, while others couldn't overlook its shortcomings. In the end, it's a truck that's often forgotten in the annals of pickup history. The 1978 Subaru Brat was a vehicle that dared to blur the lines between a car and a pickup truck. With its name standing for Bi-Drive Recreational All-Terrain Transporter, Subaru aimed to create something truly unique. However, despite its innovative spirit, the Brat encountered several obstacles along the road. Firstly, it was based on the Subaru Lion station wagon rather than a purpose-built truck chassis. This meant that although it had a cool appearance and was useful for light-duty tasks, it lacked the robustness and cargo capacity expected from a traditional pickup truck. Beneath the hood, the Brat didn't boast much power either. Early models were equipped with a 1.6-liter engine producing only 67 horsepower, far from setting any speed records. Additionally, there were safety concerns. One of the Brat's distinctive features was its rear-facing jump seats in the cargo bed. While this was an innovative idea and may have seemed fun, it raised questions about safety. Passengers in those seats were exposed to the elements and had little protection in case of accidents. Another noteworthy aspect of the Brat was how Subaru navigated around the chicken tax, a significant 25% import tariff on light trucks in the U.S. By installing rear jump seats, Subaru classified the Brat as a passenger car, thus avoiding the tax. Although a clever move, it raised doubts about the vehicle's integrity. Despite its uniqueness and off-road capabilities, the Brat failed to capture widespread appeal. It wasn't even sold in Japan, its country of origin, due to lack of interest. In the U.S., its journey ended in 1987. While the Brat had its enthusiasts who appreciated its distinctive character, it couldn't break into the mainstream market. In 1976, the Cadillac Mirage pickup truck emerged as an attempt to blend Cadillac luxury with the ruggedness of a pickup truck. Crafted by traditional coachworks of California, the Mirage aimed to dazzle with its fusion of style and functionality. However, it fell short of expectations in several key areas, earning itself a place on the not-so-great list of pickups. Initially, a Cadillac Coupe de Ville, the Mirage underwent significant modifications by traditional coach works, including the addition of a pickup bed. While its distinctive appearance turned heads, its practicality left much to be desired. Powered by a formidable 8.2-liter V8 engine, one might assume it had ample power. Yet, with a modest output of only 200 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque, it lacked the robustness needed for heavy hauling tasks. Suitable for leisurely drives around town, but ill-suited for substantial loads. Then there's the matter of price. Converting a luxury coupe into a pickup came with a hefty price tag, doubling the cost of the original coupe. This elevated price positioned the Mirage as more of a luxury statement than a practical purchase, placing it beyond the reach of most consumers. Production of the Mirage was brief spanning only from 1975 to 1976, with an estimated total of up to 240 units ever produced. While its rarity could have added to its allure, it also meant limited availability for interested buyers. Restoration efforts are further complicated by the scarcity of specific body parts, making maintenance a daunting task. 
adding to its challenges, despite being sold at Cadillac dealerships, General Motors never officially endorsed the Mirage. Consequently, it was perceived more as a dealership novelty than a GM-approved product, potentially tarnishing its reputation and appeal from the outset. The Dodge D50, a compact pickup truck that left its mark despite its humble beginnings. Let's delve into its story. Firstly, the D50 entered the scene in the late 1970s, positioned as a reliable and economical option for drivers seeking a compact truck. Despite its smaller stature, it packed a punch under the hood, offering a range of engine options that delivered respectable power and fuel efficiency for its time. Now let's talk about its design and durability. The D50 boasted a sturdy frame and well-built body, making it capable of handling various tasks with easy. Its compact size also made it maneuverable in teat spaces, ideal for urban driving or navigating challenging terrain. However, like any vehicle, the D50 had its shortcomings. Some owners reported issues with rust and corrosion, particularly in regions with harsh climates or frequent exposure to salt on the roads. Additionally, while the D50 excelled in fuel efficiency, it lacked the towing capacity and hauling capabilities of its larger counterparts. Despite these drawbacks, the D50 garnered a loyal following among drivers who valued its reliability and affordability. It carved out a niche in the market as a practical and efficient workhorse, earning respect for its durability and performance in various driving conditions. In terms of pricing, the Dodge D50 was positioned as a budget-friendly option compared to larger trucks in its class. Its affordable price tag, combined with its reputation for reliability, made it an attractive choice for budget-conscious consumers seeking a dependable daily driver or light-duty work truck. Overall, the Dodge D50 may not have been the flashiest or most powerful truck on the road, but its blend of affordability, reliability, and efficiency ensured its place in the annals of pickup truck history. Introducing the Nissan Hardbody, a rugged and reliable compact pickup truck that made waves in the automotive world. Let's explore what sets this truck apart. Firstly, the Hardbody earned its reputation for durability and off-road capability. With a robust chassis and solid construction, it was built to withstand the toughest conditions, making it a favorite among outdoor enthusiasts and off-road adventurers. Now let's talk about its design. The Hardbody boasted a timeless and utilitarian aesthetic, with clean lines and a no-nonsense approach. Its compact size made it maneuverable in urban environments, yet it still offered ample cargo space and towing capacity for a variety of tasks. One standout feature of the Hardbody was its impressive reliability. Owners praised its dependable performance and low maintenance costs, making it a practical choice for daily driving or demanding work environments. In terms of powertrain options, the Hardbody offered a range of engines to suit different needs, from fuel-efficient four-cylinders to robust V6. This diversity allowed buyers to tailor their truck to their specific requirements, whether for commuting, hauling, or weekend adventures. While the hard body may not have had all the bells and whistles of its larger counterparts, its focus on ruggedness and reliability struck a chord with drivers looking for a no-frills truck they could count on. As for pricing, the hard body was positioned competitively in the market, offering excellent value for its capabilities. Its affordability, combined with its reputation for durability, made it a popular choice among budget-conscious consumers and small business owners alike. While the hard body may have had its strengths, its shortcomings ultimately overshadowed its appeal. As newer, more advanced trucks entered the market, the hard body struggled to keep up, earning a reputation as a relic of a bygone era. In summary, while the Nissan hard body had its moments, it ultimately fell short of expectations, making it a forgettable footnote in the history of pickup trucks. The 1999 Chevy Silverado, a top seller in the US, yet not immune to its fair share of challenges. Let's dissect it, keeping it straightforward. First off, let's address the fuel system. It's been a source of trouble, from excessive fuel consumption to engine hiccups and safety concerns. These issues are significant, especially for a truck expected to handle heavy loads and long journeys effortlessly. Now, on to aesthetics and durability. 
particularly concerning the body and paint. Picture your Silverado succumbing to rust, paint peeling off, or experiencing body damage. Not a pleasant sight, right? These issues not only affect its appearance, but could also lead to structural problems in the future. Electrical issues have plagued many 1999 Silverados. Whether it's flickering lights, starting problems, or erratic electronic controls, these electrical glitches can be frustrating and costly to fix. However, it's not all bad news. The Silverado boasts robust engine options and spacious interiors, providing ample power and comfort. Unfortunately, these positives can sometimes be overshadowed by the challenges we've discussed. In conclusion, while the 1999 Chevy Silverado has its strengths, it's essential to acknowledge and address its shortcomings to ensure a smoother ownership experience. While the Ford F100 from the 1950s holds a special place in automotive history, it's essential to acknowledge that it had its limitations and drawbacks. Compared to modern pickup trucks, the technology and features of the F100 from the 1950s were rudimentary. It lacked advanced safety features, creature comforts, and performance enhancements found in contemporary vehicles. The F100's interior was basic and utilitarian, with minimal insulation and amenities. Long drives could be uncomfortable, especially on rough roads, due to the truck's stiff suspension and lack of modern comfort features. The F100's handling characteristics were typical of trucks from its era, with vague steering, poor braking performance, and a tendency to wander at higher speeds. Maneuvering in tight spaces or parking could be challenging due to its large size and limited visibility. Like most trucks of its time, the F100 was not known for its fuel efficiency. Its thirsty engines and heavy construction meant that it consumed more fuel than smaller, more efficient vehicles, making it expensive to operate, especially during periods of high gas prices. Many F100s from the 1950s suffered from rust and corrosion issues, particularly in areas prone to salt exposure or humid climates. Poor rust protection and the use of lower quality materials meant that the truck's body and chassis were susceptible to deterioration over time. Despite these shortcomings, the Ford F100 from the 1950s remains a beloved classic truck, cherished for its timeless design, rugged durability, and contribution to automotive heritage. While it may not be the best pickup truck by modern standards, its significance and appeal endure among enthusiasts and collectors alike. The Studebaker M-Series, produced from 1941 to 1948, competed in a crowded field of pickup trucks of its time. While it had its merits, it faced several challenges compared to its contemporaries. The Studebaker M-Series was built with sturdy construction and ruggedness, typical of trucks of its era. However, it was prone to rust and corrosion like many vehicles from that time, especially in regions with harsh climates or poor maintenance. In terms of performance, the Studebaker M-Series offered a mixed bag. While some models provided sufficient power and torque for everyday tasks, others were underpowered and struggled with heavy loads or challenging terrain compared to competitors. The reliability of the Studebaker M-Series varied among owners. While some praised its dependability and longevity, others experienced issues with mechanical components such as the engine, transmission, and brakes, leading to frequent repairs and maintenance. Compared to other trucks of its era, the Studebaker M-Series offered a relatively basic and utilitarian interior. Comfort amenities were minimal, and the cabin space was limited, making long journeys uncomfortable for occupants compared to rival trucks. Safety features were rudimentary in the 1940s, and the Studebaker M-Series lacked modern safety equipment such as seat belts and crumple zones. In the event of a collision, occupants faced greater risks of injury compared to trucks with more advanced safety features. While the Studebaker M-Series had its place in the market during its production years, it faced stiff competition from other manufacturers offering trucks with better performance, reliability, and comfort features for the time. Thus, it may not have been considered the top choice among pickup trucks of its era. The Willys Jeep truck, produced from the late 1940s to the early 1960s, was a unique entry in the pickup truck market of its time. Here's how it stacked up against other pickups of its era. Compared to other pickup trucks of the era, the Willys Jeep truck was relatively compact, making it well-suited for off-road driving and navigating tight spaces. Its smaller size made it popular for agricultural, 
military and utility applications where maneuverability was essential. One of the key advantages of the Willys Jeep truck was its legendary off-road capability. With its rugged construction, high ground clearance, and four-wheel drive system, it could tackle challenging terrain that other pickups of its era struggled with. This made it a favorite among farmers, ranchers, and outdoor enthusiasts. Truck was built to withstand the rigors of off-road use and heavy-duty hauling. Its robust chassis, solid axles, and simple mechanical components contributed to its reputation for durability and reliability, even in harsh operating conditions. The Willys Jeep truck was powered by a range of inline-4 and inline-6 engines, offering modest performance suitable for its intended purposes. While it may not have had the horsepower of larger trucks of its era, its torquey engines provided ample pulling power for its size. Compared to other pickup trucks of its era, the Willys Jeep truck offered a more spartan and utilitarian interior. Creature comforts were minimal, and the cabin lacked the refinement and amenities found in larger, more upscale trucks. However, its simplicity and ruggedness appealed to buyers looking for a no-nonsense workhorse. Safety standards were less stringent in the mid-20th century, and the Willys Jeep truck lacked many modern safety features. Its basic design and lack of crash protection meant that occupants were more vulnerable in the event of an accident compared to modern vehicles. The Willys Jeep truck carved out a niche for itself in the pickup truck market of its era, offering unmatched off-road capability, durability, and versatility. While it may not have had the size or comfort of larger trucks, its ruggedness and go-anywhere attitude endeared it to generations of drivers. The Jeep Forward Control FC series produced by Willys Overland and later by Kaiser Jeep from the late 1950s to the early 1960s, was a unique and unconventional entry in the pickup truck market of its era. Here's how it compared to other pickups of its time. While the Jeep Forward Control FC series had its strengths, it also faced several challenges that contributed to its reputation as one of the less desirable pickup trucks of its era. The FC Series cab over engine design, while maximizing cargo space and maneuverability, was unconventional and unfamiliar to many buyers. Its unique appearance and layout may have been off putting to some, leading them to choose more traditional pickup trucks. The compact cab of the FC Series lacked the space and comfort amenities found in larger trucks of its era. The interior was spartan, with minimal creature comforts and limited seating space making long journeys uncomfortable for occupants compared to rival trucks. The FC Series short wheelbase and cab over engine configuration resulted in different handling characteristics compared to conventional pickup trucks. Some drivers found the FC Series to be less stable at higher speeds or in windy conditions, which could affect confidence behind the wheel. The cab over engine design of the FC Series also impacted visibility for the driver. With a shorter hood and limited forward sight lines compared to trucks with a front mounted engine. This reduced visibility could lead to safety concerns, especially when maneuvering in traffic or off road terrain. While the FC series offered a range of engine options, including inline four and inline six configurations, some models were criticized for being underpowered, especially when fully loaded or towing heavy loads. This lack of power may have made the FC Series less suitable for certain tasks compared to trucks with larger engines. Like many vehicles of its era, the FC Series was prone to rust and corrosion, especially in regions with harsh weather conditions or poor maintenance. Poor rust protection and the use of lower quality materials meant that the truck's body and chassis were susceptible to deterioration over time. 1982 Dodge Rampage now this one's a bit of an oddball in the world of pickup trucks from the early 80s. Picture this. Dodge decides to blend the utility of a truck with the nimbleness of a car. Sounds intriguing, right? Well, let's dive into why the Dodge Rampage didn't quite hit the mark during its brief stint on the market. First off, let's talk utility. The Rampage came with a small cargo bed and a front-wheel drive setup, which, while decent for everyday driving, didn't quite cut it for hauling heavy loads or tackling rough terrain like its rear-wheel drive counterparts. It was like trying to tow a trailer with a sedan, not exactly the ideal setup for serious truck tasks. Then there's the issue of power. Under the hood, you had a choice of underwhelming inline-four engines, including a 2.2-liter and a 2.5-liter. These engines lacked the grunt needed for serious towing or hauling, 
leaving the Rampage feeling a bit sluggish and underpowered compared to other trucks of its era. And let's not forget about its limited market appeal. The Rampage's unconventional design and front-wheel drive layout may have turned off traditional truck buyers who were looking for ruggedness and versatility. It's like Dodge tried to reinvent the wheel, but ended up with something that didn't quite resonate with their target audience. Ultimately, the Dodge Rampage's short production run and limited capabilities meant it never quite found its footing in the competitive pickup truck market of the early 80s. While it had its quirks and charms, it's often remembered as one of the less desirable pickups of its era. Let's talk about the GMC Sprint, a vehicle that stirred some interest back in the 70s. Picture this. GMC, known for its sturdy trucks, decides to offer something different, a hybrid between a car and a truck. Sounds intriguing, right? Well, let's unpack why the GMC Sprint didn't quite live up to expectations during its time on the market. First off, its identity. The Sprint tried to blend the utility of a truck with the comfort of a car. It had a sleek, car-like design with a pickup truck bed in the back. While this concept sounded appealing, it left many buyers wondering, is it a truck or is it a car? The lack of a clear identity may have made it challenging for the Sprint to find its place in the market. Then there's the issue of practicality. The Sprint's truck bed, while handy for some light hauling, was smaller than traditional pickup trucks of the era. This limited its usefulness for tasks like hauling large loads or towing trailers. It was like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. Not quite the right tool for the job. Under the hood, the Sprint offered a range of engine options, including V6 and V8 power plants. While these engines provided decent performance for everyday driving, they lacked the muscle and towing capacity of larger, more traditional trucks. This made the Sprint less appealing to buyers who needed a workhorse for heavy-duty tasks. And let's not forget about its reception. While some buyers appreciated the Sprint's unique blend of car-like comfort and truck-like utility, others found it to be a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. Its hybrid design may have left it feeling like it didn't quite excel in either category making it a tough sell in a market dominated by more established models. In the end, the GMC Sprint's attempt to bridge the gap between cars and trucks fell short of expectations. While it had its fans, it's often remembered as an interesting but ultimately flawed experiment in automotive design. 1978 Dodge Leal Red Express Truck This one's a true standout in the world of pickup trucks from the late 70s. Picture this. Dodge takes the boldness of their classic truck design and pairs it with some serious muscle. Let's dive into why the Lil Red Express truck is remembered as an icon in pickup truck history. First off, let's talk style. The Lil Red Express truck didn't just blend in, it stood out. With its eye-catching graphics, chrome exhaust stacks, and wood paneling on the cargo bedsides, it was a head-turner on the road. You couldn't mistake it for anything else. But it wasn't just about looks. Under the hood was where the real magic happened. The Leal Red Express truck was powered by a high-performance 360 cubic inch, 5.9 liter, V8 engine, packing serious power and torque. This wasn't your average truck engine. It was a muscle car engine in disguise. And let's talk speed. The Leal Red Express truck wasn't just fast for a truck. It was fast, period. In fact, it was crowned the fastest American-made vehicle in 1978 by Car and Driver magazine, clocking an impressive 0 to 100 miles per hour in just 13.5 seconds. That's sports car territory. Now here's the kicker. Dodge pulled off this speed demon trick by taking advantage of a loophole in emissions regulations, allowing them to sidestep stricter emissions standards applied to cars. It was a clever move that made the Leal Red Express truck a legend in its own right. But like all good things, the Leal Red Express truck's reign was short-lived. Dodge only produced it for two model years, 1978 and 1979, making it a rare find today. Its limited production adds to its mystique and collectability among truck enthusiasts. In the end, the Dodge Lil Red Express truck isn't just a pickup truck. It's a symbol of a bygone era. While the Lil Red Express truck's powerful engine was a selling point for performance enthusiasts, it also raised eyebrows when it came to emissions regulations. Dodge's clever workaround to bypass stricter emissions standards may have given the truck its speed, but it also contributed to environmental concerns. In the end, while the Dodge Leal Red Express truck had its charms, its impracticality, poor fuel economy, exclusivity, and emissions issues 
earned it a reputation as one of the less desirable pickup trucks of its era. Despite its iconic status today, it serves as a reminder of the trade-offs and compromises of automotive design in the late 70s. 1970 Ford Ranchero Now, while it had its fans, the Ranchero faced some hurdles that placed it among the less desirable pickup trucks of its time. Let's break it down. First off, practicality. The Ranchero, with its car-based platform, lacked the brawn and hauling prowess of its truck counterparts. Its smaller size and limited payload capacity meant it wasn't the go-to choice for heavy-duty tasks like hauling hefty loads or towing trailers. For those seeking a robust workhorse, the Ranchero left much to be desired. Then there's the issue of handling. Unlike the rear-wheel drive pickup trucks of its era, known for their stable handling, the Ranchero's front-engine rear-wheel drive setup sometimes led to less-than-confident handling, especially under heavy loads. This compromised stability could make driving the Ranchero a bit nerve-wracking, especially on challenging terrain. Customization options were another sore point. While traditional pickup trucks offered a plethora of configurations to cater to various needs, the Ranchero's car-based design limited its versatility. With fewer options for customization, buyers found themselves with fewer choices to tailor the vehicle to their specific requirements. Comfort was also a concern. While the Ranchero aimed to provide a smoother, more car-like ride compared to its truck counterparts, some found its suspension tuning too soft. This resulted in excessive body roll and a disconnected driving experience, particularly when tackling corners or uneven roads. Perception played a significant role as well. Despite its attempt to blend the comfort of a car with the utility of a truck, the Ranchero often struggled to shake off its reputation as a compromise vehicle. It didn't fit neatly into either category, leaving buyers unsure of its capabilities and identity. While the Ford Ranchero had its merits, its practical limitations, handling challenges, lack of customization, comfort issues, and ambiguous identity placed it among the less desirable pickup trucks of its era. For those seeking a dependable workhorse, there were more suitable options available among the traditional truck offerings from Ford and other manufacturers. 1988 Ford Sky Ranger now, this one's an interesting entry into the compact pickup truck market of the 1980s. Picture this. Ford aims to offer European consumers a versatile and affordable option for both work and play with the Sky Ranger. Let's dive into why the Sky Ranger didn't quite soar to the heights Ford had hoped for during its brief production run. First off, let's talk about its rugged design. The Sky Ranger boasted a robust exterior and off-road capability, making it suitable for various tasks from farm work to outdoor adventures. However, despite its practicality, the Sky Ranger faced challenges in terms of performance and reliability that hindered its success in the market. One of the key issues was its inconsistent performance. While the Sky Ranger offered decent off-road capability, its on-road performance left something to be desired. Some drivers reported issues with handling and engine performance, which affected their overall driving experience. Another hurdle for the Sky Ranger was its reliability. Like many vehicles of its era, the Sky Ranger struggled with reliability issues, including mechanical breakdowns and component failures. These reliability concerns tarnished the Sky Ranger's reputation among consumers, making it a less appealing choice compared to more reliable competitors. Despite its rugged charm and versatility, the Ford Sky Ranger failed to gain traction in the competitive compact pickup truck market of the 1980s. With stronger competition and reliability issues plaguing its reputation, the Sky Ranger was discontinued after a relatively short production run, marking the end of Ford's attempt to capture the European pickup truck market with a compact and versatile offering. In conclusion, we've taken a journey through the world of pickup trucks, exploring a diverse range of models from different eras and manufacturers. Despite their differences, these trucks all played a role in shaping the landscape of pickup truck design and innovation. Whether it was pushing the boundaries of speed and performance or offering practicality and versatility for everyday use, each model contributed to the rich tapestry of pickup truck heritage. We hope you enjoyed this exploration of pickup trucks and found it informative. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And as always, thank you for watching.